<laughs> but anyway, um, the person who's about to come to the stage right now is talented and funny, and she is bilingual. <laughs> she knows how to code switch, <laughs> which is an important part of being black in the United States. So, sister, come on up, Ebony Bell. Go, Ebony! Hi everybody. Okay, can, is it possible that I move this up? Because I'm kind of tall and I don't want to get pinned down. All right. Hey everybody. How are you local people doing tonight? Oh my god, this is so cool, isn't it? Woo! Yes. So awesome that Dr. Dean put together. Like, please just give her a hand. She's like super good. Stop clapping. Because she forgot my name on the first draft of the post. I'm not so mad about that. I was like, word, baby, that's how you feel. That's okay. I'm just kidding. I'm from Chicago. Most people don't expect that when they first meet me because I'm kind of like a new age, like free spirit hippie type. I'm like what I would call a hood hippie. <laughs> like I would just love to go to the park and smoke a joint with any one of you. It's like my favorite activity. I fucking love trees, like both types of trees. <laughs> I'm like the tree hugger that'll hit you on top of the head with the branch though, you know? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm a pacifist. I moved from the most dangerous city in America to like the second safest city in America. I feel like I came up, like honestly. And I'm not gonna ruin my shot, like. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it real cool, stay real low key, and finesse a Caucasian and power out of a job that I'm underqualified for. I've done it my whole life, I've been working this far, I'm not gonna, I'm not deviating from the plan. <laughs> living in Chicago is so different from living in Orange County though. Sometimes being here for me kind of feels like I'm in like a nature show. <laughs> like National Geographic, me and my roommates watch it a lot, or like a have you guys ever seen The Crocodile Hunter with Steve Irwin? Yeah. You know that shit? <laughs> so like sometimes when I see people in public staring at me, I like to fabricate their inner monologue using Steve Irwin's voice. I'm like, cry, he a black woman, what a beautiful, woo, woo, woo! I want to stay at a distance, I don't want to upset her. Her black people are very volatile. <laughs> and I'm like, this is a true story. One time I was at the beach with BSU, the Black Student Union, and these two Chinese women came up to me and my friend and asked us to take a picture with them because they had never seen black people ever in person I'm before. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay, it's okay, it's okay. And, you know, at first, like when this happened, I was like, I didn't, I didn't really know how to feel. I was like, should I be offended? Then I thought about it. I was like, this might be a business opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> like, what if I start charging motherfuckers to take pictures? Like, that might be really, that might be really profitable. But then I was like, I don't want to be that nigga, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be called a coon out here in these UCI streets. Because I, like, I really care about what the black people on campus think about me. Because our community is super small and, you know? But it's kind of cool because, like, we're closer. Like, whenever I see a black person out and about, we both just like the Black Panther suit, like, boom. Wakanda forever. <laughs> we both get, like, an African accent all of a sudden. It's, like, super funny. <laughs> Like, I would say like a, like a downside for me is that like the dating pool is like fucking non-existent, no. man. <laughs> and that's cool. Like I don't have to date a black dude. Oh wait, this is like a side note. If any of you want my number, like just ask me, okay? Because <laughs> I'm still looking. <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah, the dating pool is like mad small, which is cool. Like I don't have to date a black dude. I just noticed that like when I when I start talking to like a non-black guy under the under the pretense that we're going to start dating, I feel like they kind of try to like speak my language. Do you know what I mean? Like, but like damn, sis, that little plump album is dope as fuck, don't you think, Pam? Like, damn, it's good as fuck, right? And I'm like, I guess. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I listen to Coldplay, but like, <laughs> that's what you like, I guess. It's kind of funny, but it's like really disappointing. Because if a black dude called me fam or sis, I'd be like, damn, he's trying to friends on me. But I think they think it's romantic. <laughs> I don't have the same sentiment, but okay. <laughs> I feel like I should just stop trying to date in general, though. Because, like, like, this is kind of embarrassing, but I got catfish, like, a few months ago. 
or like it might have been a month ago. It was, it was really recent, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like, because one of my friends, they were like, oh, I was on a dating app and I met somebody, and I was like, okay, like maybe we should try a dating app. Like, it, it could be, it could be cool. So like I put a lot of effort into my profile, like all the pictures and the answers to the questions, and like I started talking to this dude, and then like he wasn't really my type because like, I was like much cuter than he was. But I was like, you know, he was kind of angsty. He was like, you know, I'm mad at the world and I hate people, and I was like, okay, shit, me too. <laughs> Like, I just fucking dig people with attitude problems, like, it's my thing. <laughs> so I set up a date, and I was, like, super excited, and I was showing all my friends the profile, like, oh, I have a date from a nap, and, you know. And I felt like it, because it was my first date off of a nap, I should, like, do some research on this dude, you know? Like, I'm a student. It comes naturally to me to do research. And, like, of course, by this, I mean, I was going to, like, engage in a healthy session, Facebook stalking, you know what I mean? So I looked up his name, first and last, and I realized, like, on the profile, but he only really had the pictures from his dating app profile. And I was like, hmm, my bullshit sensor starts tingling. <laughs> I said to myself, I said, no, bitch, this is suspicious. <laughs> so I go deeper and deeper until I'm like on his stepmother's sister's cousin's page, like looking for pictures, like family reunions, vacations, anything, you know? And then like I'm scrolling and I'm scrolling and I see it. It was a picture of him, but it didn't look like, like how I had pictured him based off the picture of him that I had seen. You know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, Instead, he looked like the guy from his profile picture and that guy had just gone through a psychotic break and come back from the other side a few days ago. Like, basically, this motherfucker looked crazy. You know? <laughs> like, he looked really fucking, he looked like a little insane. So, I clicked on the info for the picture and I noticed it. Like, the picture that were on his profile had been taken like years of fucking ago. Fucking years ago, man! And I got really mad, I feel like that's not right. Like, I mean, I get if you use pictures from like days when you were cute, like, ooh, that day my legs were popping, I'm gonna take a picture. Like, my makeup was mad, fleeky last Tuesday, I'm gonna take a picture, I'm gonna use that picture. But like, it's different if you're like, damn, I was cute that day last month, and shit, I look good four years ago, like, it's not the same thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was so mad. I threw my phone across the room, like, I was, I was so fucking pissed. I even woke up my roommate. She gave me advice on like how to curve him nicely, and I was like, oh, this is cool. Like we kind of bonded over it. Like it was, it was nice. Like I really love my, I love them all so much. Like I love my roommates. I feel like they're they're really awesome. I was a little worried at first because I lived with two dudes, and I didn't know if that would be like awkward. But it's it's nice. Actually, two of my roommates are bonding a little bit more than the rest of us right now. <laughs> like, really, really bonding. <laughs> and it, which is fine, like, if they're happy with it, like, I, if they like it, I love it. But it's kind of strange at first, because, like, they were trying to keep it low-key. But, like, it was mad obvious, because the girl that I share a room with would, like, sneak back into our room at 5 a.m. and pretend to be asleep. But, like, her bed would still be fully made and everything. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guess if that's what you want to do, like, we all know. <laughs> and one day they're like, Ebony, we're dating. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love them both. And like a lot of my roommates are vegan too, and they, they tried to get me into it. They're like, meat is bad for you. You're killing the environment. You know, like all the stuff that you see on those Netflix documentaries and forget so that you can eat cheeseburgers. <laughs> like all of that stuff. And I was like, yeah, I love trees. I love the earth. I'm going to do this for Mother Earth. <laughs> didn't last. <laughs> it wasn't long before I was like sneaking Chick-fil-A in my car, like in shame. <laughs> I would tell myself, like, you can have a cheat day, Ebony, like a cheat day is okay. And then like a little voice in my head was like, bitch, veganism does not work like that. <laughs> you can't do that. So like I, I'm back on the dark side now. <laughs> I was super weak. But I feel like it's because Chick-fil-A and in and out are just so fucking good. Like, I'm from, they don't really have that in Chicago. They have like one Chick-fil-A in Chicago and no in and outs And they're so good. And I feel like it's weird because those are the two most religious fast food chains. Mm -hmm. They're like um, the most popular on this side of the United States. But like, if you think about it, that has to be a key to their success. Like, they must have somebody back there blessing them chicken and them, and, and them hamburgers, you know? Especially Chick-fil-A, because they're Southern. Like, they must have, like, a Baptist preacher at every single location, like, Jesus! <laughs> Jesus bless this chicken, yes! Let the church say amen! Amen! <laughs> Alright, that's it. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, we made it. And somebody is taping this. After I told people not to. Oh.